Hey everybody, it's Rapid Plus TCT. I'm at the Revo Point booth with my buddy Jeff. How's it going, man? Going good, we're having a great time. It looks like a great show, and I'm really excited to stop by because as you walk by, you see this amazing setup for 3D scanning. I know some scanning, but I don't know as much as I want to, so I was hoping you could tell me a little bit about it because I don't understand what I'm looking at. This is the RevoPoint TrackIt 3D scanning system. TrackIt 3D. Carbon fiber housing with an upgraded Metro X scanner. The okay. original Metro X introduced last year had seven lines crossed, total 14 lines. Oh, for scanning, because it shoots out the lines and then there's the other lines and that creates your grid. Yes. Is that right? Okay. Yep. This has 15 and 15 for a total of 30. That's much better. It is much That's better. That's beefier, like you, you said. You scan more smoothly and it pulls in a lot more data. And uh, we have a tracking module. Yeah, so that, that and that work together? Yes. Okay. Within a range of like four meters, uh, this tracks this and it knows what position it's in. So you don't have to put markers on the item that you're scanning. Oh, okay, so usually when we talk about scanning, like with the original Metro X, you have to rely on the part you're scanning to provide positional data. Mostly it requires markers. Oh, because if you start scanning a large object, it has to know that this the relates field, to the this, The field right? of view isn't big enough yeah. to show the fault and get the detail. Not a problem with the track it because so long as it's being tracked by the tracking module, you can move around and you need no tracking dots on the object that you're scanning. Oh, so this, oh, I see, I see. So the scanner up here is reading this and it knows positional data. Exactly. And it saves that off as it's scanning this. Every time you take a frame of data, it's translated into the software uh, with its actual position. So the virtual camera is known oh, every that's... time where it is, <laughs> how it's angled. That's cool. Now, a system like this, again, I'm not, I'm not so familiar with scanning. Is this, a, is this a typical industrial sort of setup for scanning? This is not typical. It, it's in the more advanced range, still in beta. Uh, all of the details have not been ironed out yet, but all the uh, information about the Kickstarter will be released in May. And really, you're just kind of showing it off here, right? Yep. This is a show, people want to see cool stuff, and so you brought this out to, to show them. Can I hold it? Yes, you can. Okay. The carbon fiber, light, oh, firm. It weighs nothing. Almost. Like, that is, that is nothing. Well, I would imagine for handheld scanning, especially of large objects, you're, you're looking at fatigue at times. If you have a very heavy yes. thing, and if you, if you have to be really accurate with your scanning and, and precise with your movements, mm -hmm. having something heavy at the end of your arm doesn't translate well over time. <laughs> no. So having something that's really light, like this is, this is easy to move around. Now I'm, I'm pointing it at you. I shouldn't scan you with this, right? Most likely not. No, no thank you. It's a class 2M laser. So it's visible light, 450 nanometers. So it's safe ish. Okay. You don't want to scan it in your eyes for any extended period sure. of time. If you wanted to try to scan somebody's face, you should use one of the NIR scanners. These would, everybody would squinch up. Oh yeah, everybody would yeah. be squinting in this. Yeah, <laughs> I understand that. Like this is the yes. first time something like this is going to be available to a whole bunch more people who yes. really want access to this. Because if you mitigate the price of this from what it used to be or, or a style like this, then you're going to get more people with more ideas using this. It's a real great tool for creativity. I want to see it work. Can you show me? Yes, I would love that. As you can see on the sliding scale, it gives you an indication of the ideal scanning distance. Right now, that's good. Up here is orange because that's too close, more likely to lose tracking. I see. That's excellent. This is good. This is still beta software. That's why it's in Chinese. <laughs> There's far and oh. too far. We're going to set this up and you can see here we're in the good range. I just press this top button here okay. and we start scanning. So I see blue and orange. Blue is that is that active and then orange blue is, is what's active. Okay. Orange is what has been scanned. And you're shining. And you want to scan it until you get green. That means that you've got optimum scan density. Ah. Oh, okay. And you're scanning the inside of a door panel. Like this is metal. This is this is reflective. Metal. Yep. And there are there are no tracking markers. No track. Well, there are plenty of tracking well, markers <laughs> right there. 
And that's the beauty yeah. of a system like this. If we talk about virtual reality, you have the towers that track controllers and headsets in 3D space. Exactly. And so this is just that same technology, but allowing positional data for 3D scans. Mm-hmm. Do you want to give it a shot? Yeah, I do, I do. Okay. I'll just start sweeping up and down in a smooth motion. Okay. Okay, and then come over <laughs> to the other side. This is oddly fun. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, you're keeping uh, in the good range. Good, good. Good and excellent. You said to look at the pattern and the size, yeah. and that's been really helpful because rather than having to look back and forth, yep. I can just pay attention to the size. This is freaking cool, you guys. <laughs> look at that. Yeah, you can see a little bit of the cable right there. You can see in through the large hole. So from here, then we finish. Okay. That's complete. Every individual frame has a virtual camera in 3D space. Okay. And so each frame is just like a 2D image of depth data on there. And uh -huh. you take thousands of frames, or sometimes just hundreds, and they all have to be aligned. So that's what Fusion does. Okay. This is similar to photogrammetry. Very Taking similar. Taking multiple photos from in different that angles way. and yes. realizing the camera angle and, yep. okay. That makes mm -hmm. a lot of sense. So we're going to fuse on a one millimeter distance. It's what does that mean? It means that we're not going to go for the maximum amount of detail. We're trying to save some time. Uh, okay. Yeah. So if you want to go back and recalculate with a different setting, do that. You can also go back in and if you deleted something that you need back, you've always got the original. Ah, uh, so it's like the ultimate control Z. <laughs> well, while that's going, Jeff, tell me, what is your experience with 3D scanning? How long have you been doing this for? I just saw the ad for the original POP 3D scanner on a one. Kickstarter, and I thought, this is finally down to the accuracy that I need for some of the projects that I want, because before, you'd 3D scan somebody and they'd just come out as sort of a blob with a vaguely nose-shaped thing. <laughs> no shape thing. Okay. And now with the POP3 scanner, obviously, noses could be correct. Yes. Now, that's the back side. That's the front side. Wow. Now, you notice there's going to be a little bit scattered stuff on a here. A little bit. But I would so imagine software what we're going to do is the isolation command, generally the first thing you do after a fusion. It identifies all of the weird stuff that just doesn't seem to fit. So you click that and oh. it is gone. And just like, looked like that. Like, now oh. this is still a point cloud, the <laughs> individual points. Another thing that you can do is uh, overlap. What are we overlapping? You have pixels or dots in there that overlap. They're just too close together. They don't give you any value on there. They just take up extra calculation time. Oh. And then when you're meshing a solid object, it's just tiny little tri uh, triangles that don't, don't do you So you can like get rid of them? You can get rid of them. Cool. You just get rid of everything that's within a certain range. Oh yeah, less calculations, faster time, yep. all of that. And You've then, got your point cloud there. Yep, and now we're gonna mesh. It is solid. Oh, okay. Oh, this is when we create the solid manifold object, hopefully for export, right? Yes, this is not manifold. No, not even close. Because we've only done one side, <laughs> but you know, well, here clean. you've got the holes. Uh, you can uh, make measurements off of that. So if you want something that's going to bolt onto that, you scan this, you get a decent quality scan. You can mirror it over and we got this as the right rear door. Then you can have the left rear door and then oh. you can put your car back together. That's right. Oh, I didn't even think about that, but scanners allow the ultimate symmetry when doing 3D design. Exactly. Okay, this has been fantastic because I didn't know this existed. It was a really cool thing to see from afar, and then I got to talk to you and learn more about why it's cool and what it's really gonna do for imaginations of people out there. Like this is, Jeff, this is cool, man. <laughs> I am so pumped up! It's gonna be so much faster. Normally, it, you take 15, 20 minutes just putting the marker dots yeah. on there just to get something done, and now you don't have to worry about it. And a laser scanner means that there are far fewer materials that you have to prepare beforehand. Yes, yes. So yeah, you don't have to spray on and then hopefully get everything done before the spray disappears. It's yeah. much easier then to capture the world around you. Yes, it is. I think this is a great place to wrap it up because we gave the audience a lot of eye candy, but before we do, I'd like you to look into the camera and kind of give them an idea of where they can go to find out more about this. For the Track It uh, scanner from RevoPoint, look for it on Kickstarter in May.
And yep. you know what, when we get the link, we'll put it down below. And I, yeah, I, I think cool. there's a way for them to sign up for updates for when there is yes. Kickstarter updates, You'll right? Be notified. That'll be down below as well. Thanks for watching. <laughs> if you've made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, scan all the things, and as always, high five. Bring it in. Oh, ho, ho. <laughs>